so we're getting into the transition to uh, primitive, the primitive form of production. So we're going to get something that's a little more sophisticated than, than that species being type of, of production. Um, where we did have this dynamic gap that would open up and then close as the tribe gets larger. And if we want to maintain this larger tribe, then we have this new level of necessary consumption and new level of necessary labor and necessary products that comes with that. Um, and so as I was saying, how we could just like work harder to get more uh, water buffalo on a particular day, or we could, I could make an ax for a few days and put in extra labor that way to get surplus uh, products. Uh, another way of doing that is to kind of plan ahead and think about putting our labor into something that makes it easier for us to um, draw out of the ecology some, uh, some extra produce. So we put our labor into um, uh, you know, perhaps uh, we uh, do something uh, where we start to even, you know, plant some plants. Now, as a, as a hunter-gatherer tribe, um, you're moving around, so you're not really, you're not really, um, you're not really in a position to do any form of what we think of as agriculture. You know, you, you gather berries and nuts and, and uh, you know, and that's part of your labor as well as hunting water buffalo or whatever the case may be, or woolly mammoths. Um, and that was, you know, a big thing going on about 50, 40,000 years ago, um, hunting woolly mammoths. Same thing, you can run them to death and, and, uh, and and get a lot of produce. So, you know, these tribes are growing and uh, there's a lot of woolly mammoths, but, uh, but human beings do kind of hunt the woolly mammoth to extinction um, along with the change in the climate made it, the, the large portions of the earth uninhabitable by woolly mammoth. Uh, so their populations naturally declined, but human beings didn't help that at all. <laughs> and did eventually hunt them to extinction. Um, but uh, we might think of, for example, a woolly mammoth. Okay, we can get a woolly mammoth and we can, and we, we can run it to death, but we also could harass it with spears and um, get to that level of exhaustion a, a lot sooner uh, just like in the way, like in a bullfight, you know, a bullfighter just, you know, uh, inserts these spears into the bull at uh, the, the right points that really fatigue the bull until it, it falls over. Um, you can do the same thing with a woolly mammoth. And so what if we, uh, so let's, okay, we'll, we'll go out in a couple of days to go get a new, new woolly mammoth and we can do our thing, but let's, let's make some spears uh, today and tomorrow and let's, let's all work together and put in this extra labor to make these spears. And that's going to make the whole process of hunting uh, a lot easier, a lot more efficient, a lot more effective. And we're going to, you know, maybe we could even uh, get an extra woolly mammoth uh, on our hunting day or just do it a lot quicker so that we can spend more time butchering and and treating skins and, and making clothes and and it's just making our life easier they probably weren't thinking oh that's just going to lead to more babies and more mouths to feed but that is what's happening in the background right um <clears throat> and so we're going to get surplus products now in the form of these spears that then feed into the necessary labor and make this whole 
uh, basic core of necessary labor and necessary consumption uh, work more efficiently with these with this surplus products. Um, now, in order to make these these spears, uh, we need raw materials. So we're going to part of our labor is going to be in going out into the forest and finding appropriate um, wood sticks. Uh, you know, we may be carving these down in, in special ways, uh, but we're going to need the raw materials. We need we're going to need the wood from the forest, and maybe we're going to put little stone. Uh, tips on these so that they'll they'll penetrate the the skin of the woolly mammoth and you know it's going to take some figuring out how to do this um and but then we're also going to need like equipment and facilities if we're going to carve the wood into the appropriate shape so that they're aerodynamic we're going to need okay we're going to need some carving uh, axes. We're going to have to manufacture those. So we need some equipment. Now, we can, once we make this equipment, we can use it over and over again. Um, but we're going to keep on bringing raw materials from the ecology. And we might set up a little shop, a facility for making spears. And so we have like a special tent that has like all the, has all the, the woodworking implements and we have, uh, you know, places to sit and there's a sort of a, a routine where one person's carving the wood, one person's making the, the stone tips, another person is, is attaching uh, the finished shafts to the tips, and they, we need some leather, you know, to, to do this fastening process and maybe some tar or whatever. And so we have raw materials in terms of wood, stone, leather, and some tar, let's say, and then um, and then we have the tent that's specially set aside for this um, and has the equipment in it. So that's the equipment and facility, and um, and those are all surplus products. But now they are the means to even more surplus products. So. Uh, now we get this dynamic gap opening up through variable labor that's placed differently than, than the variable labor that we first talked about. Okay. And then the big question becomes, how do we distribute the surplus products? Because we're going to have more access to woolly mammoths and um, maybe we have more time to go out and, and forage for for nuts and berries and mushrooms and things like that. Uh, and in tribal societies, predominantly, those surplus products go back to the tribe at large, and then we have, uh, you know, this whole, what was once variable when we first set up the shop to make the spears, now that becomes a necessary part of our lifestyle. And so we have to reproduce the means of production. We're not only reproducing our labor by feeding the mouths, uh, but we're also reproducing the means of production. We're reproducing those spears because we're going to have to make more spears next week to, to go out and get another mammoth. So uh, now this just becomes part of the re routine. And so we have reproduction of labor, reproduction of the means of production. The spears are now a means of production. Raw, we have raw materials, facility, and equipment. Okay. And now we're going to think in terms of like weeks. So, uh, like every week, let's say we need to get a mammoth in order to support our tribe. And one, one mammoth will do the trick. And we've distributed the surplus so that everybody's getting more mouths to feed. And now we're just at this necessary level. The tribe has grown a little larger uh, because we're getting more mammoth um, and more efficiently. And again, maybe we're able to use our our 
surplus labor then to get more nuts and berries and stuff like that. Um, so we're just, we're living nicer, but then as you live nicer, you have more babies and then now you have to do all this all the time. And we're just keeping up with our expanded tribe. And, you know, and part of this too is as we get a better, uh, you know, flow of, of produce, we're also making it so that it's easier for elderly people to live longer. And so we got to feed them. And, and so this is all playing together very dynamically. Um, and, and of course, elderly people are not out hunting. You know, you just basically have to take care of them like children. And, um, and so they're not producing, but they're consuming. And, and that all just becomes part of the overall lifestyle. And now we just have things that we have to do. We have weekly necessary labor where we have to go out and hunt the woolly mammoth or a certain number of them, whatever it is that we need. Uh, and then occasionally we don't have to do it every week, maybe, but every few weeks we're going to have to make more spears. And maybe, you know, in one week we can make enough spears for a month, right? Or, or even two months or something like that. Um, and then we don't have to do that again every week. We can we can just make a stockpile, have those setting aside, and we just do that occasionally as needed. So we get this occasional necessary labor, uh, and then we have necessary weekly labor. The occasional labor is to repro reproduce the means of production. The necessary weekly labor is to reproduce our labor to keep us surviving in the lifestyle to which we have become accustomed. Uh, but then we're still going to be able to, you know, really turn it on certain days and 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 work harder to get more woolly mammoths and uh, and we're going to end up with the that dynamic gap all over again. Um, but eventually, uh, you know, we're going to get to the point where we, we can even say, okay, well, we, we have, uh, we're, we're being more efficient at, at catching these woolly mammoths. So we can, you know, we're doing it in a quicker amount of time. So we have some labor left over. We can start building out more, um, surplus raw, you know, gathering surplus raw materials from the ecology, doing more equipment and facilities. You know, maybe we're, maybe we're thinking of, uh, I don't know, producing nets, you know, now we're going to make big nets that we can, once the woolly mammoth slows down enough, we can put this net around them and, and trip them up or in, in, some, in some way uh, to make them fall over. And then that exhausts them all the, the quicker. Um, we can just start thinking smarter about things and keep building things out. And just once in a while, you know, I get some strange idea and I'm like, well, this, I have this net idea. Let me, let me try it. And then everybody's like, well, let's see if it works. Okay, we go out. It works. We're like, okay, now, now we're going to build more of that. But I just took the initiative and put in a little bit more labor to, to figure that out. <clears throat> um, but then we're going to have to occasionally you know, make more nets. The net is going to break. We're going to, you know, some mammoth is going to run off with it. <laughs> and, and so, you know, you have all these issues. So occasionally you're going to have to reproduce that. Um, so not only just the, the normal flow of things, but, you know, once in a while we're going to have to say, you know, we really need to make some nets. And this is less occasionally, but once in a while we've got to, we got to push through this week, guys, and we got to, we got to make this, um, make these nets because we're, we're running short on, on nets. Um, and now we're pulling more out of the ecology and we get this kind of more complex uh, dynamic structure based on the variability of labor. And so this variability of labor is really key. And there we have primitive production. Right. All right. So um, I'll. That's primitive 
uh, production, and I'll see you in the next video.